um, with an education in interior architecture. But professionally have um, worked um, mainly in the industry of digital design in both the United States and Germany. So um, from education to developing um, and getting on, jumping on the, the 2D CAD bandwagon, um, we, we are now, our industry is now transitioning to 3D. So, um, and, and of course, I was one of them, uh, fascinated with the whole um, BIM ideology um, and uh, more or less delved, delved into that, that sector. Um, when 3D laser scanning was introduced to the um, AEC industry, um, we uh, adopted and um, kind of restructured our business model to um, incorporate <clears throat> scanning and building information modeling. Um, the technology has been uh, rapidly changing. Um, new innovations being developed um, day to day, and it, it really is very difficult to keep up. But having been one of the, the old school traditional, um, having to go on site with your tape measure and your, your sketch paper and, and pencil, um, have a great appreciation for this new technology. And um, so what we, what, what my company, um, 3DBDT, focuses on is actually um, working for and providing um, the information to architects, engineers, uh, contractors, um, a, a, a richer, um, more valuable deliverable to begin their um, their design process with. So whether it's um, uh, renovation, restoration, reconstruction, um, we provide them with the as-built. But the as-built now is no longer just um, 2D CAD drawings, but it's an actual 3D um, intelligent model. Um, and that in, in conjunction with um, 3D data. So what I'd like to, and, well, and, and just a little bit more about my background. So um, providing as a service provider of, of uh, scan to BIM services, um, we realized very quickly that the, um, uh, the preservation industry could um, uh, benefit from this technology, from what, what you can gain from using this, this and, and, and retrieving this, this, this data. So um, my involvement also uh, with historic preservation, um, I'm a board director for Napa County Landmarks as well as Sonoma Lake for historic preservation. So with my preservation background and, and historic passion, um, we're very excited about being able to combine the, um, the, the, the technologies to provide even more data. So what I'm going to present today, and, and uh, the, the fact that it is a technology, a, a non-destructive, non um, non-contact technology, um, it is just one more benefit to why we should promote and support um, this for uh, the benefit of um, preserving the integrity of historic buildings. So um, what I'm going to focus on today um, uh, are two, two, well, two instances. The first case study, we'll be talking about um, the use of combining 3D laser scanning with infrared thermography. Um, what to, um, to show you how uh, having used a com combination of these two technologies and, and what kind of data was retrieved from it, what, what did they learn from it. The other um, case studies I'm going to present are case studies that, um, that we actually worked on and these were um, historic buildings that were severely damaged after the South uh, Napa earthquake. 
So part the, the, the reason why um, a combination of the two technologies, um, 3D laser scanning, uh, and, and I'm sure everyone is familiar with 3D laser, laser scanning. I'm not going to get too much into the technology of, of it, um, other than um, when you, uh, this, this first case study that I'm going to talk about um, utilizes 3D laser scanning because it provides uh, the real-time geometric measurement that is needed um, for position, spatial position and, um, and measurement. And the infrared thermography provides um, a 2D data acquisition in the form of a, a 2D image, um, thermal image, and, and that in conjunction with the, um, the, the geometry will give us the information that, that we're looking for. So um, does anyone or uh, use or has anyone um, uh, come into contact with, with thermal Im imaging devices? And, and, and how are you using them? You mean for purpose? Or? Yes, for, for what purpose and, and um, are, you, are you using thermal uh, imaging? So water is big. Uh, trying to find any anomalies, so if there's any moisture in the wall cavities or something. Right. So um, the 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 thermal um, the infrared cameras pre um, present a, an, an inexpensive way of being able to um, see and detect anomalies um, by by use of of these thermal cam cameras, uh, and it, it's a, it's a it's a it's a different technique. It's a different technology um, providing these these images as opposed to 3D laser scanning data. So I'm going to show you. So the la what the laser scanner does <laughs> is it collects um, it, it it will capture um, an existing structure um, in 3D. Each point uh, is is a three D coordinate basically, and um, uh, the the model that the three D model, is, which is the three D data set, is what we call a point cloud. So, um, and again, uh, to have a measurable um, geometry in conjunction with the the two D thermal images. Um, will will produce different results. Um, so how can we use these uh, the non-destructive um, technologies? Um, what I'm going to talk about today is um, how we use them for um, building facade maintenance, um, building efficiency, uh, building conservation, and building assessment after disaster. Um, and uh, and I think after disaster is 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 great for assessment, but what we need to think about is preventative. Um, how can we use this data for monitoring purposes, um, uh, reinforcement uh, purposes to prevent um, extensive damage in the event of a disaster? So one one interesting thing about um, uh, I've, I've been part of a committee um, in San Francisco for um, building facade maintenance. John, I think he's here. Sorry. Um, and um, just recently, an administrative uh, bulletin was signed by the director of San Francisco Department of Building Inspection. And this was to establish um, policies for implementing uh, the San Francisco existing building code um, uh, in regards to um, facade inspection and maintenance. And it was written into this bulletin that um, remote sensing techniques, including 3D survey, um, can be proposed. And um, in regards to historic resources, um, they're suggesting uh, the use of the, the least intrusive and, and least invasive um, techniques for um, assessing these, these conditions. 
So this is this is a big step for um, for our industry um, to in in promoting the use of as Safna was was talking about earlier. Um, they use drone technology, um, which presents um, benefits, safety benefits, for example. Um, yes, you know we're using scaffolding and and we're we're, we're climbing. Um, on the structures to get a closer look, but the assessments, like Safna was talking about, from the ground using binoculars, um, you, you can only detect so much information. Um, so, so using laser scanning um, or drone technology photography from the ground, not only is it uh, non-destructive and non-invasive, but you you um, you will achieve uh, much richer data. Because you will be able to detect things that you can't see with the naked eye. Uh, just a quick question: In San Francisco, do I was any version couldn't use the drones within the city. The FAA well, um, and and obviously, <laughs> it's it, it it is developing. Um, there are yes, uh, there are areas where you cannot use it, and and. Um, uh, the ordinances are changing all the time. Restrictions. Um, so it isn't. It is a case by case, and where it will be reevaluated and and decided um, where to say and and guidelines will be placed. Obviously, um, but the, just the fact that they are adopting, they're accepting this technology as a means of of inspection and evaluation is it. it is a huge plus for the for the industry because it opens up um, a lot of doors for um, and again you know it, it is a it's a it's a technology that is that is safer so it's 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 safer to um, to gather the data um, it's much quicker it's much much more accurate um, so we, we're very excited that um, this will be an accepted uh, method for expect inspection which is which is going to be required for um, facade maintenance. Um, so here's some typical images of, of um, uh, the thermography. And um, as far as building efficiency is concerned, what you can detect um, by, by way of heat is um, in, in, this, in this instance here, um, Leakage uh, from air loss, um, which then, um, with further investigation, can determine, you know, why um, or, or how why is that happening? Is it is it uh, poor insulation? Um, is it through cracking uh, voids? Um, it, it, any and again moisture, right? So using the thermal imaging, um, were you able to detect um, what what were you what were you searching for were you searching for air um, air loss or or um, moisture moisture <clears throat> yeah which is which is very typical um, so if you can isolate the area at least um, uh, you know where it's taking place then you that, that could lead to further investigation as to why it's happening and where it's coming from Um, building assessment after disaster. I am going to talk about, as I mentioned earlier, um, some case studies from the South Napa earthquake. Um, this is very, um, it, it was a very sad day after the earthquake had happened. Um, I, I live in the area and, and, and being a, a, a part of the uh, landmark society, we, um, we were able to deploy very quickly um, volunteers um, to come out and do building assessment. But again, we're talking visual inspection. So um, just by walking through the um, the site and visually inspecting um, damage to uh, and then tagging them, red, red, yellow, or or green, um, this this process had to uh, take place several times. Um, one one imminent and then and then again and again and of course some of these these buildings that were tagged yellow 
uh, eventually were then tagged red when, when um, there was a closer um, and more involved assessment. So the reason why I'm going to just talk briefly about this case study, um, this isn't something that we did, but um, it demonstrates the use of combining 3D laser scanning with the thermography um, technology and what kind of results um, they were able to achieve. So this particular case study that I'm going to talk about is the St. Augustine Monumental Compound in Italy. Um, this is a monastery that was built in 1507, and um, it did suffer um, extensive damage from earthquake, fire, and subsequent seismic events. So um, this was a, a very typical case study that um, would reveal uh, information and and what they were trying to achieve was um, to realize a monitoring system so um, Chris I was going to ask you with the with the Greek theater now that um, um, you know uh, it has been um, retrofitted uh, do you have any any type of monitoring system in place to kind of follow and track um, any potential uh, problems uh, like cracking, for example, like moisture? You were talking about perhaps. Problems that have occurred have been in the kind of ancillary kind of things like that. Um, there's no, there's no real follow-up on the performance of the structural system. Um, there fairly often, so I can observe it. And, uh, there hasn't been any. So these are the things that we we encourage and we talk to to our clients. You know, we are the provider of the data, the the information for you, and we're learning just by by um, you know talking to them. What kind of things are you looking for? How are you? What are the tools that you're using now for monitoring, or do you have them in place? Um, how are you 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 measuring, um, uh, say? Um, what, what, what you're investigating, cracking and, and, and such. Um, and that we have a technology that we can provide you with the, this, this um, very rich and accurate data. And if you could um, take advantage of it, um, you know, just trying to make you aware of, of what is out there and, and, and alternative methods, alternative strategies. Um, what you're looking at here is the 3D point cloud that I was talking about. This is what the laser scanner captures. Um, and uh, it, it is made up of just billions of points, but what it does is, is because it, um, it gives you that uh, geometry and spatial position, it is measurable. So it's great to have photographs, it's great to um, have, have 2D information, um, but if it, if it isn't measurable, um, it's, it's impossible to monitor. Uh, well, not impossible, but it, it, it isn't as accurate and it is, it, it's a little bit more difficult to monitor. So in this case study, um, what you're looking at here also is, is the 3D point cloud, but um, certain uh, architectural features were um, scanned with a higher resolution so that you can see more close-up detail. Um, what I'm, what you're looking at here, these, these gray slides, um, it's a 3D mesh. So you take the, the 3D point cloud and you turn it into a, a mesh, a surface. Um, the image here B is um, projected over the mesh and that is the thermal image that you're looking at. And over here, uh, image C, you're looking at the intensity of surface reflection, um, and this is this is what you this is what you get from the, the laser scan data. Um, basically, the um, it's a, a mapping of the residuals from the reflective surface. 
The previous one? Yeah, so I did several later scanning projects before, but um, the one that I've had experience on, um, the point cloud is just a collection of red dots. That is correct. I, do the newer later scans, do they overlay color, color photograph like photography? Yes, so, so that's what you see here. Um, if, if you scan in black and white, all you're going to have is our intensity values. Um, if you want color RGB, um, then you would take color photography. And so the laser scanner does its, its scanning and then it goes back and it will take photographs. And those photographs are then mapped to the point cloud. So it gives the representation here um, uh, as being more realistic. Yeah. You ever use, if you're saying you're, you're worried about a building settling or moving, um, well, this is the monitoring system that I'm talking about. Uh, um, yes, in, in different ways. It depends on what you're trying to monitor. Um, it, it's, it's often used, for example, in building construction for phase scanning, right? So at different phases of the project, it, it's scanning over time. Some are running continually, but um, uh, we so so we don't do that personally. But um, we do have um, you know uh, systems and methodologies of, of uh, our resources that we use. We call upon experts. So w what we're learning also in this industry is that um, you know wh when three D technology was adopted uh, throughout the AEC industry. Um, we're learning that there's there's so many different avenues you can you can take this technology into. Like Armin's going to talk about ground penetrating radar. Um, there's the drone technology. There's the 3D laser scanning. There's thermal imaging. There's there's all different types of of technologies that could be used to to um, that that result in in basically different data. Um, and I I think that. We try and um, just just educate the industry as to what is out there and what you can use for your specific um, project and your in your case. So monitoring is used. Um, there they are using three um, D laser scanners for for monitoring purposes. Um, but it's it's still it's still developing. It's still um, uh, we're looking at reports and 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 you know how are they being analyzed and uh, what could we do differently to to improve the results. So what you're what you're seeing here in this this thermal image, for example, is is different than what you see over here from the uh, this this thermal image here is just overlaid um, on the point cloud so that. Um, you know, you, you have measurable data, um, but the the color scale and the variation of color um, is is telling a different story as as what you're seeing over here. And I'm going to go to the next. Uh, well, before I do that, um, maybe a little bit hard to detect, but what you're seeing, um, which you can't necessarily see with the naked eye, um, are are yes, cracking. But then, because this is a um, point cloud, uh, these cracks are measurable. So for conservation purposes, you can go in there, you can measure them, and then um, uh, months later or a year later, depending on how, how often you want to monitor it, you can go back and remeasure and, um, and then determine you know, if there's further damage. Um, the, the, this, what you see here, is just plaster areas where the plaster um, has been damaged. Uh, I'm going to go to one more. Yes. Yeah, so this is an interesting photograph. Um, what you're seeing here in, um, at the top, this this sort of reddish um, outline, um, it's not visible. Um, from the na with the naked eye, but what the thermal image is um, uh, actually this is the intensity uh, image. What it's what it's revealing is a shape, and um, the the history report um, states that that there you there was a a rosette that was um, 
below this this window, which you 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 would not otherwise know. Sorry, did you have a question? Yeah, um, just from um, terms of like the resolution of the barrier, you say that the cracks are measurable. Is it just like the length of the crack that you're able to fish in, and how much is that, or are you also like the depth of that? You can, if if depending on. Um, I am well. You you will be able to measure it. Obviously, the um, the larger the the deeper the depth, the 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 more information. Because and I will show you on a slide um, coming up how you can cut a profile or a section through it. So with the scan data, because it is three dimensional, you can cut it um, in any direction, horizontally, vertically, and get the profile information or plan view information from it. So yes. Um, I'm curious to get the, these real high resolution images. Do you have to have getting? A, I want to get a sense of like how much time it takes to collect that information and then to digest it and to essentially spit it out. Well, the laser scanner captures um, about a million points per second. So um, the data capture is, is <coughs> very, very, very fast. It it will take. Um, with 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 just a an average um, resolution, um, anywhere between three to five um, minutes for a three hundred and sixty degree rotation. Without a skill of building, just a, uh, you just did a two hundred fifty thousand square foot laser scan inside, outside, and roof, and they did that all in the course of a week. So yes, so it's pretty pretty fast. Yes. Um, I, I had a question though. Just Follow on to um, Eddie's question on the measuring cracks through the point cloud. Is that at least again, it's been a few years, but the um, measurement, the precision was like two millimeters or something like that. Is it, have they gotten more refined? Because how, how do you measure really small cracks? Right. We're very careful about um, claiming accuracy, the millimeter accuracy. Yes, they, they, they do say. Um, you can measure to a millimeter accuracy. Um, it, when you're you're um, looking for specific data, um, we can we can isolate areas and and then scan at a higher resolution, for example. And obviously, in order the, the the laser beam can only measure what it sees. So if it can't see it, like we can't see behind the wall, you're not going to get any information. So if, if you're trying to measure the depth of a crack, so for example, um, you're going to want to have more points. And, um, and, and uh, as long as the beam you know, can, hits that surface, you will, it will retrieve data. So um, uh, one of the interesting things about um, these images here is, uh, th Again, this is this is the intensity mapping here. What you see here, so it's picking up basically res the residuals, what we call backscatter. Um, so when the beam hits a surface, it bounces back. It's it's um, absorbing or refracting light, and and that's what where you see this this color difference here. These are the thermal images, what you're looking at down here, and it was just interesting how. Um, they were able to see and detect different things um, depending on the time of day that these photographs, these thermal images were taken. So this is what I was talking about when you're cutting sections. Um, this, is, this is a wall, um, an exterior wall, and um, what you're seeing down here our profiles um, of that wall cut at these different sections here. And you can definitely see a bowing of the wall here, at where, it's, where it's taking place at these different sections, and, um, and how far out of, out of plane they are. What software is it? Is it cyclone or is it else? Uh, no. So, so this is this again. This is a case study that um, I I took just to demonstrate um, being able to use a combination of the two technologies, three D laser scanning and thermal imaging. So we did not actually do these these reports. Um, it's just showing you what the technology is capable of um, providing. As far as data, as far as information. But you can. 
Profile yes, it is. It is a software program. And which, uh, which one I don't know which one was used with this particular one, but um, you can use um, uh, software registration programs to get this kind of uh, information. Um, and, and basically, what they're saying is that, that um, you know, the, the the more they analyze the data, um, the more they can um, you know make determinations as to well, well, why? Why is this happening? Is it, is it, um, you know, the foundation sinking? Is it, is it just, um, uh, in, in this case here, you can see this is, this is a thermal image. It's showing the difference in color is just a difference in the material. Um, and, and down here, and the, the blue is representing um, moisture that, that's coming from, from the ground up. So it, it, it's about how you interpret the data as well. Um, you know, what are you looking at? This is, this is just, you know, telling you there's some changes going on. There's something happening there. You know, what is it? Um, it leads to, to um, further investigation. It, you know, this, this is isolating the areas and, and, then, and then going in um, for further investigation to determine what's really going on. Um, this, this too, what you're looking at is, um, again, that, that color mapping that we were talking about. Um, so it is a point cloud and it is mapped um, with, with uh, the color image. And, and see, these, these cracks are pretty substantial. If you were able to, if you were to, to cut that in a plan view, you would definitely be able to measure um, those depths. Um, what the thermal images is showing you here in these blue areas, are just um, a stone that is um, more degraded than, than, than the others. Which, again, when you're looking at, 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 at uh, this column, this is a column um, with the naked eye, you can't necessarily, you don't necessarily uh, determine, oh yeah, this, this, this stone here is, is worse off than this one is. That's what these blue areas are representing. Take a closer look at those stones because those are the ones that are degrading more. That's just measuring the surface temperature. Yes, it is. Well, um, the, the the thermal um, the infrared thermography is measuring the surface temperature. What the laser scanner is doing is just um, giving you information of surface reflection. So it's picking up residuals, whereas the the thermography is picking up more of the anomalies. Uh, your previous degree says structural strength. So um, can, well, again, uh, that? again, it's it's interpretation. I, I, what they were what they're trying to achieve with this data was was um, you know if, if you have a wall that's bowing like that, okay. um, something structural is going on. So let's let's investigate it further. So so basically, what we're trying to do is provide you. Um, engineers and, and architects and uh, with the data to then further analyze and see what's going on here we can we can tell you what the, what the um, uh, technology is capable of, of, of doing and then um, for example you say well can I measure the cracks how can we do that um, yes we can what 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 um, device are we going to use which tool are we going to use um, uh, I just wanted to uh, clarify. Uh, can you tell me this is this council is four uh, thousand psi or three thousand psi? Can you tell me? That? No, I can't. This is not. This was not a case study that we did. Okay. Um, but basically, what I was trying to do, what I was trying to show you with that case study, was um, just uh, being able to use a combination of the two. Uh, the 3D laser scanning and the infrared thermography, and what kind of um, data you can achieve from. Uh, so now these are cases that we did do, and these this these are um, three historic buildings that were severely damaged after the South Napa earthquake. Um, what you're looking at here um, is the 3D point cloud of the historic um, Gordon Building. This is a, a registered building, and it just coincidentally we were asked to scan this building just to produce as-built drawings for um, restoration purposes. 
So, so sorry. Back to the last image. Is that with or without the that's color laser scanning? No, it, color, it, the, or is it with the, the laser, laser scanner doesn't does doesn't um, scan in color. Um, it, when you when you see a color image like this, it's the photographs, it's the color photography that is mapped onto the scan point cloud, and that's what, you're and that's what you're looking at here. Thank you. Right. Uh, so from the um, scan data, we can create a 3D model and um, and produce construction drawings, which is what we did. Um, after we um, scanned the building, it was months after that the earthquake happened. So it was just purely coincidental that we had scanned the building and we wanted to go back. We were asked to go back and rescan the building post earthquake and um, just to see, it, um, you know, <clears throat> what was uh, what occurred from the what, what damage was would occurred from the earthquake and what was there previous. Um, part of the problem right after the earthquake was was the quick assessment. Um, they needed to go in there quickly and do these building assessments to to tag them and to determine if they um, possessed a or um, a potential hazard for um, the public. So what we were and, and and again, this is a color image mapped onto the point cloud, so it is measurable data. Um, we were able to uh, overlay the uh, before and after scan data and determine, um, you know, what happened, what what was damaged. Um, after the earthquake and what was there before. So there was substantial cracking that was going on here and this all happened after the earthquake. So um, reading from that data mm -hmm. um, and what you were able to do pre-earthquake, do you think it, it helps predict uh, what would happen in a given earthquake? Um, and you could sort of read into that and see where those cracks could occur later um, yeah so so whoops you know, so, as a model i guess you would say correct so there, i mean there's there's certain we're looking at it as a um uh, from a from a conservation standpoint um monitoring for example from a structural standpoint um what happened to the building and why why was it damaged and and um what what you know we could look at this and we can interpret it and say well where was the majority of this cracking um happening well this is the roof level um, this is just a parapet wall, so some, you know, it, it it pulled away from from the roof and also from the um, the floor level, um, you know. How come the small beers are still there? Sorry. How come the small beers are still there? You know, <laughs> the second floor. Yeah. It's, it, it's oh, here. There. Yeah. So. Um, so we <clears throat> just. Um, uh, the structural engineer that was working on this building, um, we we just provided him with all of this data. We said this this is this is what you know our findings, and this is what we see. And however you can use that data to to help you um, with your analysis, um, you know we will provide. So uh, this was this was just a case study. What can we see? What can we learn from the movement of the building? Um, overlaying the before and after scan data um, uh, resulted in 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 sort of this the, the white areas were the uh, the um, the new scan and the colored areas were um, the old scan so you know you can kind of see the diagonal going running in this direction in this direction which then the structural engineer said it, it could be um kind of a, a torsional rotation in the z-axis so so then they go in and um and use this this information to further investigate um uh, and, and isolate the damage you know quickly it, the, the software that you use to like index the models at the same location in space can that be used to make comparisons or through animations or I guess I'm trying to figure out how, how much of this is an automatic 
comparison process versus a manual just looking at the two pictures and looking at the two models. Is there a way that the software automates that for you at all? Automates uh, what, like a result of what you're a looking at here? Of two models that are indexed to the same format. Oh yes, yes. Um, so so um, when you can geo-reference the the data, the information, and you can do that in several ways. Um, you you can um, survey endpoints. Um, you can use geometry. In case, in this case, we we use the geometry. So when you go back and you rescan um, it it. It, and, and you overlay the data, it's, it's finding common geometry. So, so. The, the, if, you're, if you're indexing off of the building itself, the building itself may have moved after earthquake, right? Well, it did, and obviously. Yeah. And, that, the base. And, and that's what you're, that's what you're looking at. Yeah. So, so, um, well, in this case, you're using, uh, we used it, 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 you're asking about the software. So yes, um, the, the software does automatically find um you know fit fits them together and then we have results like this that that we can interpret through um, a color scale for example yeah, this is just that color scale, is it just thermography? no this is not thermography okay. uh, no this is not thermography. <laughs> and that's the, yes sorry so 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 3d laser scanning is just um, um giving you um, intensity value so what you're looking at here are just intensity values, and the color scale is just a representation of different um, uh, reflections. So everything in white surface is, reflection. Everything in white is in its original location, and everything that's colored that's reflected. Correct. Uh, so just just because I'm just trying to understand the process, it's a really fascinating study. It's really cool. You guys had this opportunity to look at it. Absolutely. But to determine the pre-earthquake cracks and the post-earthquake cracks, was that just a manual process of an engineer or person looking at the two elevations, or did the software actually, you know, automate it in a way that it oh no 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 the I, I see what you're saying no okay. that that software didn't okay. no it is in a visual inspection okay. of the data okay. yes but could I add to that theoretically what she's presenting you could do that depending on your resolution. And I think this slide demonstrates it. If you look in the bottom right scale, if I'm reading that correctly, that's uh, a scale of distance, correct? Yes. So when you're saying offset, so the, the red portions are more distance from the original point cloud white, the red correct. is further correct uh, displacement then say blue, the blue is minor displacement. That's how I'm reading that. And, and or elevation. So yes, um, when, you're, when you're interpreting scan data, um, the, the color variation and the color scale um, is, is dependent on exactly distance. So um, when you're looking at it in plan view, you may have, um, in, in this case, the, the blue would be your, your lower elevation. And as you go higher up in elevation, you, your color changes, and you will see that it, it, depending on where you, you, you cut. And then taking that a step further, if my little analytical brain can help interpret, the potential would be there to show new cracks because you would have maybe a zero crack location if you had the resolution that you're talking about and you happen to have. Um, the second scan showing a new crack or something. You would see a different color scale. Yes, but it's easier to detect in, you know, via a, a photograph than it is uh, a point cloud because the point cloud is just billions of pixel points. Well, yeah. And that's why we map the, 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 the point either with a photograph or with a mesh so that you have a solid surface. And, and but that does not um, detract from the, the fact that you can actually measure you can physically measure um, because this is um, actual geometry. Right. Can you put this uh, torsional crack back on the surface of the building? Oops. Uh, yeah. And you showed two huge cracks on both sides. Well, they're not correct. Oh, you, oh, you mean uh, lines, on the boundary? They were boundary, red lines before, so diagonal lines. Diagonal lines. Oh, <laughs> That was me annotating it for the. Oh, oh. <laughs> that wasn't me. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that wasn't me. Um, yeah. Okay. 
So um, this is another case study. This is um, a local landmark, the center building. Um, this is what the building looked like um, before the earthquake. And this was the, the building after the earthquake. So we went, we went back and we scanned this building. Um, a couple things were going on here. One, the, um, the structural wall of the exterior facade um, completely failed. It, 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 so the, the masonry on the outside was just barely hanging on. Um, and um, they were very concerned about uh, potential hazard, obviously, to passersby below. And um, they needed to remove the masonry as soon as possible um, in order to avoid further damage. Um, so, uh, to, in order to repair the structural wall, they had to completely rebuild that structural wall. In order to do that, they needed to remove the, the stones. And um, and because of the um, you know its historic integrity, uh, uh, so planners are looking at it from a from a safety standpoint, and your um, preservationists are looking at it from a historical standpoint, saying, well, you remove the the, the the stone facade, and you are going to compromise the historical integrity of the building. So um, you know what can we do? <clears throat> Which is why we came in and we said, well, we can scan that facade. And we can create a map. And um, so every single stone was, was, was um, mapped and labeled prior to its um, being dismantled. And, um, and now the, the stones have been dismantled, labeled, stored away. They're repairing the structural wall. And um, Using these maps and the um, CAD data, it will reassure that um, it it should <laughs> uh, all, all goes well and they're they're you're using it correctly. Um, put it back to its original state. Right, so it'll go back to the right spot. Yes, the, where where it goes and and it, it's measurable. So. Um, that's obviously super helpful. I'm curious. Uh, and we talked about the time wise before, but just to say one elevation like this, map all these stones, how long would it take? For um, it took it took um, an hour maybe to scan, and an hour, uh, maybe an hour to process the scan data, and a day to create these. Whereas, whereas the the, the the right the contractor was going, oh well, you know right. what it would have taken them to go up there and actually measure every stone and its placement and take photographs, which is photographs are great. Labels, no, <laughs> this was a manual process. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that that was a manual process. But but if you if you compare it to to the time, the accuracy, and the safety of having used traditional methods, um, it's 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 kind of a no brainer. So uh, presumably, once the building is reassembled, you would do another laser scan. To ensure that everything is in place and good point <laughs> um yes uh, you, you can do and and that's that's where the phase scanning comes in place um you will have a building um uh, it on paper that says it should be built this way um so at a certain phase we'll go back in and we'll rescan it and we'll compare it to the, the model and see if it, they are actually building it to um, specification for example um, or, or just scanning um, prior to walls being closed up, so you have a documentation of of what's going on, milestones exactly. Um, and 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 the whole point is, um, you know, avoiding these um, potential problems before they happen, um, uh, or um, uh, alleviating um, having to redo things and clashes. Um, so, so the data is is used in, in many different ways. But when you start, the more you um, you see what what it's capable of doing, the more you start you start thinking on your own when you come up with with um, or you know you're um, uh, involved in a project that has a challenge. How do I figure that out? What can we use? Um, uh, this How can we benefit from, from uh, American Canyon earthquake? This is the, the South Napa earthquake. 
Yes, yes this, 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 this happened in August of 2014. It is American Canyon earthquake. Well, it, it, it affected, I mean, it, 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 it was, it was called, it was labeled the South, it was labeled the South Napa earthquake. Um, no, it was American Canyon. Okay, moving right okay. <laughs> But in any case, it was the same earthquake. Okay. <laughs> um, the American Canyon South Africa. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, this is the last case study in the last building um, that I'm going to present today. This is um, uh, the Goodman Library, which is on the National Register. This building suffered a very, very extensive damage, both interior and exterior. Um, uh, particularly the roof and the, the tower, which you see over here. Okay, um, before we play that, John, um, mm -hmm. let me talk about um, the, the, the problems. So, they were they were extremely concerned about the tower uh, because it, it did uh, suffer extensive damage. It had already lost a lot of the masonry, um, and and of course they were concerned about it. It fought, more of it falling, especially because right across the street um, there was a construction project going on. So the vibration and and um, uh, the uh, architect wanted to put a containment over that um, tower to protect it um, in, the, in the meantime, um, before they could get to the actual restoration work. Um, but the planning commission said that, that they did not want to allow contractors up on the roof because it was so severely damaged and it would jeopardize their safety. Um, so, so how are they going to do this? And um, it was already determined that we would go and we would scan this building um, for assessment, damage assessment, um, for the architect and the well, for, for all for all the contractors involved in this particular project. Um, so we scanned the interior and exterior, and um, so the advantage of, of it being um, this non-contact technology is, um, you know, we weren't going to do any further damage to the building by um, physically. Um, uh, coming in contact with it, and um, and secondly, we weren't jeopardizing the safety of, of anyone who had to go up there and actually measure it or, or assess it. So it was done from the ground, um, and the roof was, um, yes, we could have used a drone, but again, when you have um, uh, uh, drone technologies, you have photographs. There's, there's a lot of drone photography that was taken after the earthquake as well, and it, it shows you what's going on, but it's not measurable data. So um, uh, there's only so much you can do with it. And by scanning it, we, we used, we um, stood on the um, fire escape uh, from the adjacent building to scan the rooftop. And I'm going to show you a video of the process that we used to uh, design and pre-manufacture this containment offsite. Oh, and, and I'll also mention that yesterday we had a workshop um, Two sessions. Oh, we had to press play. Uh, that. Uh, oh, is this the video? Oh, yeah, it's the video. That's why it wasn't advancing. <laughs> um, two sessions that covered drones, and one of them uh, mentioned that uh, some of the payloads for drones now are, um, could be a payload of a laser scanner. So you can fly a laser scanner above a building. Yes. Really uh, now that yes, yeah, scanners are are are. Beca are, are um, uh, keeping more keeping them stationary is a challenge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, but there are uh, drone-based lidar scanners now. Um, so yes, well, okay. So so one of the things about that is that these laser scanners, even though um, they're they're relatively portable, they still weigh. Um, and then to, trying to get a drone to fly, your drone has to be huge. Right. Um, so that's that's why these smaller drones only carry the camera. Um, but yes, now we, um, uh, we we have smaller and more compact um, scanners, and um, you know. So, like I said, this this industry is developing so quickly that um, you know something could be 
available tomorrow that, that will allow you to to, to um, scan and fly at the same time. So does the drone have to stay in a stationary position when it's taking the data? Then? No, not not with um. Well, okay. So there's two different types of scanning. There's um, static scanning and there's mobile scanning. Mm -hmm. So a static scanner, um, which we typically use. Um, does have to be stationary. You cannot move it. Um, it, it and and that we, what we do is we move, not while it's scanning, and then we place it strategically in different positions to capture the data, and then that data is registered together. Um, mobile scanning is a device, and it uses different technology that um, you can basically, it doesn't matter, you can walk around. We have handheld scanners, mobile, mobile scanners that you can just wave it around, and, and it will capture the, the, the data. Um, of, of a, a room or wherever you wherever you're at. Is that so kind of like satellite tracking where you need two or three devices to cross check each other, and then you've got at, redundancy. That yes, it's the, it's, it's the same. It's it's the yeah, same it's concept in that you need to you, what you're trying to do is you're overlaying um, data, um, uh, no matter how it's captured. And and um, so the, the type of mobile mapping that you're talking about is, is aerial mapping, right? Mm -hmm. So again, it's the same concept, but they're using different different um, tools, equipment, uh, because they're capturing larger space. So you need the range. Um, they're not as accurate, but again, you need to, to, to kind of assess your situation. What do I need? What is the accuracy I need? Do I need millimeter accuracy or is centimeter accuracy okay? Um, what is it that you're trying? Are you just trying to get an overall, you know, picture, or are you trying to build something off-site, which again requires a lot more accuracy? Okay, should we start the video? Yeah. So, so we scanned. Um, what you're seeing here is the um, 3D point cloud of the building. That one wall is the adjacent building. Um, and then from the scan data, we actually created a 3D model because architects, designers, any anyone who's who's actually working with the the um, the data needs vector vector data. So we turn it into a uh, a model that um, uh, you can produce your construction documentation from. Um, what you're looking at here is once we've scanned a project, um, we can upload the data to a viewer which could be online um, or local. And it allows you to navigate through the site uh, virtually. Um, and you can go in there and what you're looking at, what you're seeing here are 360 degree um, photographs of every scan position. And again, here you can see that on the top right, the color scale I was talking about, um, the different colors representing different elevations of where those scans were taken. Um, this, is a, this is the scan from the rooftop. Um, so, they, so what they did was they took the, the, this information and they, they measured um, that tower in order to um, design the containment. So all of this was done remote. Um, and- uh, I'll just say anecdotally that the ability to there's the measure from the point cloud, it's on the projects that I've been using later scanning on, saved so many site visits for our Absolutely. Team because you, Absolutely. Like, you always forget to take a measurement or you just miss something or something miss something. the sign, you're like, oh, what's this wow. distance? And, be able to just and you go up. online and you look in your- Yeah, you just open the scan, you pull the measurement. And, and the other thing is, is uh, often you have team members working in different offices. Everyone is remote. They can all dial in. You can be talking, you're having the same conversation on site, off site, yeah. <laughs> virtually. That's really powerful. Do you have any experience in um, uploading or downloading this material to a 3D printer or a CNC machine to make physical prototypes? Yes, um, and again, uh, this goes back to the, um, uh, you know, it can be done. We don't do it yeah. because um, that's a different, but that's theory, again, a different technology. But yes, you, you can take, model and can, you can isolate, you could have taken your the great theater. Yeah and turn that data into um, uh, printable data and then printed it out. So yes, it's, it's, it's all the same data that could be used for different purposes. Um, and that would have been kind of cool to have a, an actual 3D <laughs> printed model of it. Sure would. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as long as you have the data, yes. And uh, this is the containment that was designed um, uh, offsite. 
and um, and then they took a crane and they hoisted it over the, the tower with the crane. Um, and it took one contractor, um, you know, all of what, 15 minutes to go on the roof um, and bolt it down. So it was um, minimal <coughs> contact. And um, and this is just one purpose. So so the containment was it was well we've scanned it. What can we do with the scan data? You know, we need a um, we needed to figure out, you know, how we're going to secure the, the tower. Um, so we have the data, we, we could use it, they, they were able to do that. Now they're going into the restoration phase phases and they're um, using the, um, the same data from the survey to um, start designing from and um, uh, building their, um, creating their uh, construction documentation. Um, also, there's extensive cracking that, that took place, which initially by uh, um, the initial assessment on ground visually, they were taking blue tape and they were just um, kind of identifying where these cracks were. But um, uh, again, they can go in into the data um, uh, for these uh, viewers and, and, and start assessing uh, the, the extent of the dam damage further. Uh, are you able to, I see there's some one tree here, but I'm wondering if you have a lot of landscaping and power lines, other sectors, able, is the data able to kind of ignore that, get the whole building picture, or you start to have a lot of... No, it doesn't ignore anything. It will capture everything it sees. <laughs> so when, um, in some instances, it's it's valuable information because they're all, they're only interested in the building, but they want to know what's going on in its, its surrounding environment. So we can we can incorporate the actual model with just the the three D data so that you can see the, uh, what's going around going on with uh, adjacent buildings landscape without actually having to to model them. Sure. Um, uh, if if you're not interested in that, we can clip it away. So we clip it away. We do a lot of scanning above ceiling um, where you're, they're only interested in um, maybe the structural framing but all that mechanical and everything is in the way, we can cut it out and, and just you know provide the, the structural information or vice versa. So actually possible to cut out that tree right there and be able to yes. listen to both stuff. Yes. So. My question is the opposite. Is, is if you had a site that say was a landscape project and you had a, you were surrounded by trees, which are important to know their height and where they are, can you can it accurately capture? Oh, it, 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 it yeah, absolutely. It's all accurate. It's it's what you see. I mean, that is the actual tree. You can go in there. You can measure it. You can measure its diameter. You can, um, uh, you know, measure its placement. We're, you we're can even you can even here. cut the grade. We're and the it's, you're on an amphitheater. It's yeah. nothing but forest. Yes. <laughs> because we're constantly being asked, is our intervention taller than the trees? And we're you know we're kind of saying. Well, and and for and, and to save time, I mean, to go out there and, and, and laser scan it, um, you know, we, we want just the building, but it's going to get everything it sees. So you don't, you're not, you know, not, we're not measuring anything else, but it's capturing that. So when you're putting it together, um, you know, you could save time by then not having to go and say, well, we need to know what they were that, what's going on with that adjacent building. Well, then you have to go and you have to measure that. Um, so we find out what is important. Um, uh, before we go out, um, so we know what we're looking for and for what purpose. And very often, um, it's it's just the building structure that you're interested in, but you do need the um, three-dimensional information of what's going on uh, beyond. So you will still have your surface topography um, without having to create a site plan. Um, you will have your, your obviously, your landscape information. Um, and... Uh, and that combination deliverable saves a lot of time, uh, but you have the information that you need. Can you, can you take a, like a plan, put this thing up high, take a plan view and essentially get a photographic yes. survey Yes, yes. Um, so, so, so surveyors are using, surveyor, I'm not like surveyors are using <laughs> land, uh, laser scanning um, as well. Um, uh, what, what, again, it depends on what you're, what you're after. Um, are you looking for um, an actual um, topographic um, site plan, or are you just looking to see what the what uh, the surface is doing in 3D? 
So, so you can, you know, it, it depends on, on what you, what you need, but from the same data, you can get this, you know, different information. So uh, as I understood you correctly, you can map uh, overhead utilities. Yes. You can do that. Yes. It's very important for any kind of contractors. Oh yes, absolutely. And they do the, um, they, they, uh, what well, the, the oil and, and uh, chemical industry use it. So uh, because of, you know, it's non-invasive, no non-contact. So it's a much safer way of documenting um, what's going on. And, and to, to your point about the trees, et cetera, um, the, the aerial mapping that's going on from the air, um, uh, up until now, um, I, I mean, I just read something recently because up until now it's been a problem about, they, they, it can't see through the trees, the foliage when they're very dense. So they're not getting ground information. They're just, <laughs> they're just getting what's, what's at the top. Um, how can we see through these trees? And now they're, I mean, there's software now that, that, that is, is able to actually penetrate some of that foliage so you're getting enough ground information. Otherwise, you have to scan at the ground level and above as well. So yeah, archaeologists are actually using uh, lidar, which is a form of laser scanning mm -hmm. from from uh, it is laser. planes um, uh, to identify uh, prehistoric and historic resources that are maybe under the ground or partially under the ground because the vegetation is what covers a lot of what they would identify. Um, yeah, we had a program where some archaeologists did a survey of a gold rush era um, site, cultural landscape, and the uh, sort of in the Sierra Nevada foothills. And because there was so much vegetation, if you just flew a plane over that site, you wouldn't see it from aerial photography. But if you had used LIDAR, you can see the changes in the topography of the landscape and identify exactly where some of these historic resources were. Yeah, so I mean, conservationists and preservation are extremely um, keen on this technology because of its non destructive, non contact um, uh, benefits and um, uh, not being able to see things, you know, visually. Um, a, a visual assessment is going to give you information, but, um, you know, uh, using uh, laser scanning or, or thermal imaging is going to, going to give you more in-depth um, information. Oh, oh, thanks. In, in the case of a, a monitoring a building that is uh, damaged or undergoing settling or racking, um, I'm kind of getting at how automated can this equipment be? Like, can you set it up? I don't know how big your equipment is. I don't know how it's probably very expensive, you know, so it's vulnerable to theft or whatever. But if you're looking at a building that is maybe undergoing subsidence or racking or movement, can you track vertical movement and set certain thresholds where it would alert you and then you can have intervention with the viewer? Do you have to set this thing up on a tripod and keep coming back every few, you know? It, it probably sends off signals remotely, right? You can track it on your Monitor yes, that, yes. Know, and obviously. so, you know, it's, it's interesting <clears throat> that you, you, you bring that up because we've been thinking about that. I mean, you have laser scanners you know, like this, like this, like this. Um, I would say that the most portable one is about um, seven pounds um, and uh, it, it, they're not cheap, right? So sure. if you were to do some kind of monitoring where you needed multiple, because it could only, it, it will only um, measure what it sees. So if you're trying to get different areas for monitoring purposes, what are you going to do? Are you going to have, you know, three different um, uh, laser scanners or what have you? So um, this new scanner that has come out is um, about a third of what your typical um, uh, laser scanner costs, for example, which would be an ideal situation. You can, you can run them remote, you can put them on timers so that they will go off at a certain time of the day. Um, just like they're doing with these construction projects, you know, they have they have video right footage of it going off, um, uh, either running constantly or at certain times. Um, you could do the same with scanners. Um, so, it everything is possible. Um, it, it's it's finding uh, an economical way of doing it, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it, with with the deliverable that you want. So. We kind of start with what's what's the problem and how can we solve it? Not this is this is it. This is what we could do with it because um, you may then decide to use um, a different tool. 
Uh, maybe laser scanning isn't what you need. Maybe it's a thermom the thermography is what you need. Maybe it's ground penetrating radar. Maybe it's mobile mapping. Um, so every situation is different and you just need to assess uh, what is the deliverable and what is the best method to use to get you the results and the information that you need. Well, I'll, I'll just put that out there then because currently I know that for emergency services, they'll just use a regular level on a tripod and have a guy go out there every 10, 15 minutes and mark down, yes. you know, a little mark on the building is settled a few Correct. inches or not. And what, what do you think might be the appropriate technology on something set up over a week? Well, I'm not a, a surveyor, uh -huh. but um, I have a surveyor who works, in, you know, in my company. And so he sees, sees things a little bit differently. Okay. So, so that would be, for example, a question I would ask him. Okay. And I'll, he would come up with it with the solution. I'd and love he's, to get your business card then. And, and absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. Um, uh, so, so again, you know, it's, it's, it's going to the industry expert who has expertise in that particular area to solve that problem. We just know, it, you know, the, the broad range of available um, tools. Um, is just is, is expanding mm -hmm. rapidly, and and uh, it's it's what, what what will give you the best, the, the most um, feasible um, solution that um, uh, you know you can benefit from. That it valuable information basically, and what tools to use because we can go in um, and uh, you know use one method. It may take twice as long and cost twice as much. Um, but if you're willing to compromise maybe some of the accuracy, we can then come in with a handheld, which I could do in seconds, right? So if I was to scan, say, um, a, a 200,000 square foot building, which um, recently we did calculate, we, we came up with, uh, they, they wanted above ceiling scanning, right? So um, we would have to remove ceiling tiles sporadically. It was, a, it was an occupied building, so mm -hmm. we, it, you know, when when they're not occupied and they're completely gutted, that's the best time to go in and scan. Mm -hmm. But when you're dealing with an occupied building, which is another advantage to using this technology, because it does require maybe just one person with a with a, a scanner on a tripod instead of a whole team of people trying to 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 measure and survey. Um, so it's, so again, it's non-invasive. Um, but you know, we were looking at about seven thousand scans for this area. And um, that that's just economically not these that they they you know we said yes well that's going to take six months and it's going to cost this much, six oh. figures and and that that wasn't even a, it, but then you know we so, said well we have an alternative we can do it with this tool um, it will be half the time and and a third of the cost um, but you're not going to get the accuracy you're not going to get the detail so it depends on what you need if it's just um, a visual. Uh, visual in information that you're trying to get. Um, maybe you don't need the actual 3D model. Maybe the point cloud is enough for you to um, get all the information you need, and um, and you you know you save that that modeling time or that modeling fee, for example. So, Sherry, as a point of reference, a project like this would cost how much? Oh my goodness! <laughs> um, I mean, at that level of detail, you know, you guys from did a, that, you didn't know that you were going to need the level of detail to actually right, right. So, but see, so you just went in and, and, and they just scan. said we want an interior exterior scan um, mm -hmm. with with um, uh, as built documentation. Uh -huh. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so as a point of reference, what would that just an interior exterior with with a set of construction yeah. as built drawings yeah. um it could be anywhere from uh this was a smaller building but with more detail uh -huh. um and uh, and it was we knew it was going to be modeled so we had more scans uh -huh. um, you know to capture the, the detail to be able to model from um it could run anywhere i mean we can run projects uh, residential projects from you know um Fifteen hundred dollars, all the way up to fifteen thousand dollars, to fifty thousand dollars. I mean, it, it's very, very individual because it depends on the deliverables. Again, if we're just out there scanning and we're providing you with just the point cloud like this, maybe that's enough information. Maybe you have a team that can work with the point cloud and can create the model themselves. So, um, so the the, the um, kind of options um, are are extensive, but you can pick and choose. And again, it's 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 
when, when we deliver to a client, we let them know what they're getting. Mm -hmm. We let them know that, um, you know, we can provide you with an online viewer. It's going to save you some site time. You don't have to run back, back and forth. You can share it with your, your team members. Um, it's remote. And it, and once we've scanned it, you've got all that information. So because you, sometimes you know, they, 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 cloud is like a Navis work pre and model. You can go in there and you can, you, absolutely. You can surf it and you can measure on it. You can measure, you can surf it, you can cut it, you can profile it, you can do, you can do, um, uh, you know, many, many things with it. So, um, where was I going with this? Um, <laughs> You're talking about the cost. And I'll just say, because like, I've, I've hired them with 3D Linux Gary, yeah. and the, uh, it's pretty cheap for the value that it provides. Uh, that's, yeah. that's, that's the key, because it has that, um, when you're talking about, uh, um, and, and this is, where it, it's, it's, it's improving, but as the, um, it's still a very young technology in, in the AEC industry. Um, so we spend a, a lot of time educating, like this is the value you're getting. And maybe up front, it may be a little bit more costly than, than your traditional intern who's gonna go out and work um, uh, at minimum wage to measure your building. Yes, but how many times do you have to, to return to site? What is that costing you? And, and you know, what is it costing you at the construction site when you have to stop because of, of clash problems that, that arise that, that could have been um, headed off uh, with, with, this, with this data? So, so the illusion of, well, if you just, if you just get, we all, we're only interested in these two rooms. What would it cost if you just go scan the two rooms? I said the same as if we scan the whole building. Because um, you know, it, it's 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 a it, if we're looking at which we do, for example, at, at a day rate, um, for us to, to, to deploy our, our, our yes, our staff plus the equipment for it, um, it, whether we're we're scanning two hours or a day, it's gonna be the same price. So you might as well capture everything because guaranteed you're gonna say, you know what, shoot, we should have got that adjacent room. I need that information but we didn't have you scan that. So, so we help the client to understand um, the value and why it makes sense to not just, you know, try and cut corners because um, you don't in the end, you really don't. So can we, can we let some of the questions roll into lunch? Because the okay. reason I'm, I'm saying uh, this is, sure. uh, yeah, um, just wanted to keep us moving forward. We were, but we are gonna have an opportunity to tour this building and I don't want us to miss oh, out great. on that. Um, so I'm just going to push it into lunch and you're welcome to ask Sherry any questions during lunch <laughs> as long as she's okay with that. Um, and then we'll start again at 115. So we'll be on schedule. Thank you. Thank you.